Hey guys, so I've been playing around with the uh, serial communication, um, and I wrote just like a little short little test script, and um, it's just, a, it's on an Arduino that uh, doesn't have anything else plugged up to it, um, uh, but it was just so I could test things on the raw side of things, um, and I can run through it real quick, you got, um, you'll have some analog pan for the metal detector, maybe a voltage scale, um, the serial communication uh, in this case updates at this at this rate and um, this is the time period in milliseconds uh, the uh, mine detected flag is set by some other means however we interpret uh, what's coming over the analog pin and then um, these three flags just uh, enable and disable certain things over the serial port um, and so to test it I just have a, a toggle mode so um, every two seconds it will toggle the mine detected state from false to true or from true to false and then um, uh, as far as the serial part um, I'm just checking that uh, if the detection's active and it's been greater than um, whatever the rate is, in this case 100 milliseconds for 10 hertz, and then it checks uh, if the flag is true then it will send DET as a Arduino serial print line statement, otherwise it just sends uh, CLR. Um, beyond that it also receives some byte commands. so. These are just single characters. Um, capital D act uh, enables the detection or the printing of debt and clear. Uh, capital L will activate the light. Capital A will activate the alarm. And then lowercase d deactivates the uh, detection. Lowercase L will deactivate the light. Lowercase a deactivates the alarm. Um, and so I can just show you what it does on the serial monitor. And so it should be printing 10 clears and then go switch to 10 debts. Um, if we type in little d, it will stop um, printing all that. Capital D will make it start. Um, and so that's pretty much it on the Arduino side. And like I said, um, this is just an example. Uh, we don't really have to use this scheme, but um, I needed something to figure the raw side of it out. And so this is the metal detector node. Uh, this is just the main file. There's not really much here. You have a um, some includes. Um, you initialize raw. Uh, initialize a node handle. And then you just uh, initialize the metal detector class, which does all the work. And then um, while ROS is um, saying to keep going, it just spins a ROS, which will call any callback functions uh, that's necessary for any of the subscribed topics. And then it will uh, spin the metal detector class. And that's over here. And so. Um, so it's just a standard C class and it's got a pointer to the original node uh, node handle and it's got a spin rate. Um, these have to do with the dynamic configuration. Um, I'll explain that in a minute but um, it subscribes to the Ma uh, Mavros arming state so if, when you arm the PX4 um, that will be the signal to all the nodes that the mission has started and uh, it subscribes to a laser scan that comes from the simulator when it's running in simulation mode but otherwise it will get it will get the detection information from the serial port object right here and then it's just it publishes this one thing right here which is the uh, boolean flag for true false if there's a mine um, and I usually have flags like this um, that match with say a uh, laser scan 
phaser scan ready, uh, CFG, CFG ready, and then Mavrol state ready. Um, and these just go to true uh, whenever it receives one of those. And so they're initially false. So it lets you know whether or not you've received one. And the constructor is where you attach all your, um, basically all the arrows going between the nodes. So I set those flags to false. I'll just uh, pass over the parent node handle right there. Uh, this will attach the uh, parameter callback function. So I'll just show you what those parameters actually are. Um, down here in the init serial, I set the serial port to this address. And then also set it to CFG dot uh, baud rate for the baud rate. But where do those come from? They actually come from um, they're part of the source files. So this is where the metal detector software lives. In the config folder, there's a metal detector dot CFG. And so this is where you define so an integer spin rate. Uh, string, uh, serial port, URL, baud rate, integer. Um, I'll just use this for the simulator mode and then this is just a, a checkbox. And so these define the settings but the actual when the node is ran or when the software is ran um, go back to the ROS workspace there's a folder called param and so this has a bunch of text files so the metal detector um, these will be the actual values that it uses so um, and you can also change them in real time if you want to but um, that's where those come from and so this parameter generator will generate this header file metal detector config and that's what CFG is, is it's a metal detector config type. And so what you can do is after, after this portion of code is ran, um, it will immediately uh, run the parameter callback. And all it does here is um, it just sets the configuration to the new configuration. It sets the configuration ready flag to true, meaning that we've we've updated the parameters at least once. And here, um, just because of the way that uh, ROS rates are initialized, they have to be initialized through a constructor. Um, we just set the spin rate like that, which is actually uh, in the configuration. So after that, um, you can say CFG dot serial baud rate serial port sim mode, sensitivity, spin rate, and those were all the things we had just defined. Um, over here in the config file. And so that's how the parameters work. And I'll, I'll show you how the, the dynamic part of that works. Um, when we run it. Um, Moving along, uh, this subscribes the Mavros state. So you just use the node handle to subscribe to uh, this topic. Um, and then that's the only real input. Uh, then we have the one output, which is the Boolean flag type. And here we ad we're advertising that we're going to publish a Boolean flag called metal detector mine flag and uh, that just sets that's how you set the flag data and then here we just say well if we're in simulation mode then we're going to subscribe to a laser scan topic and then um, that callback function will set this uh, mine alert flag otherwise if we're in real life mode then we're going to init the serial port and uh, we're going to run the update serial routine and that will set this flag. And so the init serial was pretty simple. Um, you do have to use a try catch block here when you open the port. 
Um, but uh, yeah, you just set the port uh, address, baud rate, um, and I just copied, I li literally copied all of this just from the, an example. Um, and then after that, um, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to sit there and spin. Um, and so I'll, I'll explain what callback functions are. Uh, so this laser scan callback and this Mavros state callback. Um, these things will run automatically whenever you receive another message uh, on that topic you're subscribed to. And they actually execute from the main. So after you spin the metal detector, you say raw spin once. So during that spin once cycle, if necessary, it will um, run these callback functions. But um, in the actual nodes uh, spin cycle, all it does is it checks for the simulation mode flag. Um, if we're in real life mode, it will update the serial. And this is really basic, so it just checks if it's available or if there's you know something to read, and then it will uh, read that into a string with SP read. And um, uh, down here it checks if it's equal to debt or if it's equal to clear. If it's equal to debt, it will set the alert flag to true, otherwise it sets it to false. Um, and this is the only caveat I ran into with Arduino. It's that uh, uh, you have to add the carriage return and the line feed whenever you're checking for equivalence. And that's what this up here does. So it says if it's greater than three, which means you have at least one letter and then uh, return and or carriage return and line feed. It just removes the carriage return and line feed with a substring call. When it and this prints it to the uh, console. Um, typically it would be logged in a file, but you, I'll show you how to enable and disable that. Um, and so that's pretty much it for the um, update serial. Its main job is it just sets these flags right here. Um, the other equivalent function is the laser scan callback, which is what happens in simulation mode. Um, and here it just receives the laser scan and then it goes through the laser scan and um, it checks and it will count however many of the beams are broken. And uh, if that beam count is over the sim sensitivity parameter, it'll set it to true. Otherwise, it sets it to false. Um, and so, yeah, so when this is spinning, either this is setting the flag if it's in sim mode, otherwise, this is automatically running whenever raw spins and it's setting the flag. And then down here we have the Mavros state callback. And so whenever we get an arming uh, callback, it will do, uh, it will get the temporary state because we need to compare it to our current state to see if we've gone from armed to disarmed. And if we have, um, it will send the capital A, capital A, or capital D, A, L. Otherwise it'll send lowercase doll. Um, enabling and disabling those features. And then after that, uh, it just sets the current state to the new state. And so that's basically um, kind of what it looks like and from the Ross perspective um, to run it. Uh, I, I use these startup scripts. They just launch terminals. So it'll launch four tabs. And then it also writes to the uh, bash history so if you press the up arrow once on the first tab, twice on the second, three times on the third, and then four times right there. It's just a, you'll get tired of opening these windows if you work with it enough. And so this is just the ROS Core Master. Um, and I'm actually gonna uh, launch the metal detector launch file, which, So from the ROS workspace, the launch directory has the different launch files. Uh, this is the one we're about to launch. 
and it just has a list of things you're about to run. Um, and uh, this is where you declare where the output goes, whether you log it or you want it to output to a screen. If you just want to look at a certain node, um, it's also where you tell it where the text file is, where its parameters uh, to load. Um, that's pretty much it for that one. So you launch that and you see that it's printing what it's receiving um, over the serial port. And so if you open up a program called RQT, it will allow you to see what's going on with ROS. So you have the metal detector node. It has one input, which is the MavRos state. Uh, MavRos isn't running, so it's just not getting that. Um, and it outputs one thing, which is this uh, mine flag. Now, uh, this topic, which is the parameter descriptions and parameter updates, that just has to do with the, uh, the node's uh, parameter server. And I kind of, I'll show you how that works. So a dynamic reconfigure allows you to select a node. And these are all the parameters that we had defined in that file. So we could um, change this, the spin rate in real time or you know, do any one of those things. And you can change this stuff and actually see it uh, affect the robot, which is pretty nice. But um, we can actually look at this uh, mine flag um, with a topic monitor right here and we should see it toggle true false true false and so pretty much anything in any other software that's hooked up to this receiving this uh, topic uh, will be able to tell if a mine is detected and so that's kind of a, a basic rundown of how the serial Arduino ROS communication uh, works. It's kind of a long video, and <laughs> I apologize. But um, yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, we need to all get together and then get uh, get all the tools installed on everybody's computer at some point. But uh, yeah, appreciate y'all for watching.